Thank you very much to the entire family of the late Honorable Simeon Yachai. We have gathered here because a beloved husband, a beloved father, a beloved brother, a beloved uncle, a beloved father-in-law, a beloved grandpa, a beloved great-grandpa, a schoolmate, workmate, partner in men adventures has slept. Death is an unwelcome visitor who knocks at any person's door irrespective of age, education, sex, race, religion, status in society, and walks away with that beloved one. Death is an enemy. This is what has happened to our brother, and with no invitation card, we have gathered here, rendered useless, because there's nothing we can do as human beings to reverse the situation. We cannot reverse the status, but we can understand the genesis and the aftermath or the consequences which we are experiencing. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 26 of the same chapter, the Bible says, Then the Lord said, Let us make man in our image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Verse 28, Then God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Genesis chapter 2 verse 8, God prepared a home for Adam and Eve, whom he had created in his own image. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And verse 15 of Genesis 2, God assigned man the work to do. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And verse 16 and 17 of the same Genesis 2, the Bible says, God gave them instructions on how to live and behave in their new home. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For on that day you eat of it, you shall surely die. But lo and behold, the plans of God for mankind did not go as laid down for the well-being of humanity. Genesis chapter 3 gives us that scenario. 
Now the serpent, beginning verse 1, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day of it, in the day you, you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. What was the woman's response? What was Eve's response? By six. So when the woman, that is when Eve, saw that the tree was good for food, when the woman saw that the tree was pleasant to the eyes, when the woman saw that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. After they had done that, what were the immediate results of this act that was against the clear instructions that God had given to this holy pair? Verse 7 of chapter 3, then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed the fig leaves together, and they made themselves aprons. What were other more horrible results that followed? Verse 16, God says, To Eve, who was the representative of the entire world of women, from beginning to the end of the world, the following pronounce was made from the mouth of God. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and they shall rule over you. Verse 17, Adam, the representative of the entire world of men, from beginning to the end of the world, the following pronouncement was made from the mouth of God. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten the, from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cast is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth to you, for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. Then there was the ultimate consequence on mankind, verse 19. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you are taken, for dusty you are, and to dusty you shall return. And we have all gathered here today, escorting our brother back to the ground and the dusty from where we were brought from. But then, why have we come to this sanctuary? When sin entered the world, God did not sit back and watch things take their own course in whichever direction. He swung into action to remedy the situation because sin had put the human race in total disarray. The situation became hopeless. The situation became useless. The situation became worthless. The situation became desperate. We, be, we became sinners through the act of Adam. In the book says, Romans chapter 5, verse 12, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and the death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all have sinned. In which way? When Adam sinned, none of us was born. All of us have been born after our first parents have sinned, and therefore we have the DNA of sin resulting into death. If no intervention were put in place, we were to forever remain sinners, and not living sinners, but dead sinners. We were to forever remain enemies of God, but dead enemies. 
we were to forever remain without hope. We were to forever remain without Christ. We were to forever remain without God in the world, and therefore forever lost. What a pathetic situation mankind found himself. But why have we come to this sanctuary? Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 4 is giving us this. But God, who is rich in mercy, but God, who is rich in mercy, were there no intervention, we could have remained sinners and the dead ones forever. We could have remained enemies of God and the dead ones forever. We could have remained without hope forever. We could have remained without Christ forever. We could have remained without God. But God, an intervention now is coming. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, you know, in the world, there are men and the women who have been entered into the Guinness Book of Records for being rich materially. There was on us this one time for those who are old. A very rich man, his wife became sick of breast cancer, and they put an advertisement all over the world for a woman who could offer to surrender her breast, one breast, so that it is given to the wife of Onassis. Nobody came up to lose her breast. We have a people like Bill Gates, the Amazon group, Dango from Nigeria, and the millions of others. But no man, no woman, has ever been entered in the Guinness Book of Records for being rich in mercy for sinners. No man, no woman. Yes, there are men everywhere and the women, but no one has gone into that book that is known. Not anywhere, not in any literature of a man, of a woman, who is rich in mercy for sinners to an extent of giving his or her life on the cross for them. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, when we had no hope of anything, he made us alive together with Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. How has he accomplished that? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But God, who is rich in mercy. It is for this reason that we have come to this sanctuary. To understand that because of the richness of God's mercy and love, a way has been found out to endear us to God again. On that rugged cross, when the Son of God cried and said, it is finished, John 19 verse 30, he meant that the plan of saving mankind has been forever secured and sealed. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish. It is forever sealed. It is forever secured. None will take it away from you. The man we have come to mourn never mocked God. He never despised God. Like Cornelius of old, in Acts chapter 10, he feared God, the man we have come to mourn. He gave arms generously to the people, the man we have come to mourn. He supported the work of God without murmuring. He never despised prayer, for it was part of his life and was always encouraging his family not to divorce God from their day-to-day -day lives. He loved to consult and sought counsel from God's servants. An Italian by the name Michelangelo, who was a sculptor, a painter, an architect, 
a poet and an engineer. In one of his many famous quotes, he said the following, in life, it is not what you have, you have that counts. It is not what you have done that counts, but rather it is what you have become that counts. I repeat again, in life, it is not what you have that counts. It is not what you have done that counts, but rather it is what you have become that counts. What is it that could be seen in this man who never mocked God? His tenderness and the tact. His unselfish love and the closeness to his fellow men. His cheerfulness and optimism. optimism. His strength of character. His nobility of spirit. His deep consecration. His wholehearted devotion to duty characterized a not what lifetime of service to supporting and strengthening God's work, the God whom he never mocked nor despised and to man. The words of one by the name Josiah Holland in his prayer can be said of Honorable Simon Yachai. God, give us men a time like this demands strong minds, great hearts, true faith, and ready minds. Men whom the last of office doesn't kill. Men whom the spoils of office cannot buy. Men who possess opinions and a will. Men who love honor. Men who cannot lie. One other prolific writer has said the following in line with Josiah Holland's prayer. The greatest want of the world today is the want of men. Men who will not be bought or sold. Men who in their innermost souls are the true and honest. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men whose conscience is as true to duty as an to the poor. Men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. With the dictates of his conscience and as a human being, by the grace of God, Simon tried to live within the expectations of not mocking God in his lifetime. The same Italian, Michel Angelo, again, in one of his quotes, says the following. If we have been pleased with life, we should not be displeased with death since it comes from the hand of the same master. If we have been pleased with life, we should not be displeased with death since it comes from the hand of the same master. In Genesis chapter 48 and the verses 21, we have a man by the name Jacob for for there were Christian, you know Jacob in the Bible and all of us. This is a man who had been pleased with life. And it reached a point when he was now going, when he was living, and what we're going to read about him is a demonstration that he was not displeased with death. And this is what he said. Then Jacob said to Joseph, one of his sons, Behold, I am dying. He was not displeased with death. He was pleased with life, which comes from one master. And the time of death came, he was not displeased. He says to Joseph, Behold, now I'm dying. But God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. In Genesis chapter 49, when he said that, what did he do next? A demonstration that even in death he was not displeased with God. Remember, Job 14:5 says, God has given each one of us days to live on earth and the limitation is that we cannot go beyond. In Psalm chapter 9, verse 10, it says, The days of man today is 70 years old or 8 years old. Beyond that, it is a bonus that God has given us. 
Amze, he was nearing 90 years of age. Of course, as human beings, we cannot allow it to happen. But when it comes to be, because of the consequences of what happened in Eden, these are a part of the results. And God said, yes, this will be the ultimate consequence when you are in this world. But because of my love, because I'm rich in mercy, I will give you an opportunity to be called my sons and daughters in the kingdom. And therefore, for those who understood this, when time came for them to rest, they never wrestled with God. They never argued with God. This is what Jacob says in chapter 49 of Genesis 1. The Bible says, And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Gather together all the brothers that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. My suspicion could be that Musa's time, when he came to a point as a man knowing I may not live for long, he may have said something to you, a demonstration. He was not displeased because a time had come when he should now rest. And in verse 33, the Bible says, And when Jacob had finished commanding his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed and breathed his last, and was gathered to his people, a man who was pleased with life and now was not displeased with us. First Kings chapter 2, we have another man, King David. He was pleased with life. And now a point came when he was going, he was never displeased. He never argued, God, why am I going? He was never displeased. And this is what the Bible says in verse 1. Now the days of David drew near that he should die. Now the days of David drew near that it should die. So what did he do? Now, Charles, again, allow me to, to tell you to stand the kidogo. Because what is coming next now is on you. Eh, chungi, chungi. Chungi madini. Just that. This is what David told his son Solomon. Verse 2. I go all the way of all the earth, be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man. I am going all the way. In other words, I'm dying. Now, Solomon, prove yourself to be a man. Charles, Muzi has gone. Prove yourself a man. Not fighting the family members. That's not when you prove you are a man. No. Not hitting them with fists. Not kicking them. No. How are you going to be? David continues to tell his son Solomon. Remember, he's giving his last words. He said, he continued, verse 3, And they keep the church of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep in his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. So David tells Solomon, prove yourself a man. Kiswahili kinasema, chionyeshe mwanaume. In other words, when your sisters come home, let them see Mzee Simeon in you. Wapatie kakuku kidogo, wapatie kambusi kidogo, waende kuchoma. This is what it means. So that they don't miss that love of a dad. This is what this means here. So wherever they are, ata wale wakubwa kukuliko, kama kuna mukubwa kukuliko, akija, let her see her dad in you. Prove yourself a man, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. How many of us could say we pray for this man? 
that he proves a man in the home of Umze, our gracious Father in heaven. These hands are saying, may Charles take up the mantle and they lead the rest, not as a dictator, but as a loving man, loving the entire family. Give him the wisdom that you gave to Solomon. Give him the knowledge. Give him the understanding that the love the family was experiencing and that the leadership of Mse who has left now may still be demonstrated in him as he leads together with the rest along this journey awaiting for your second return is our prayer for him in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your seat. Allow me to say something for the mothers who are now with us. May the following be your resolve as mothers. As you travel through life awaiting for the soon return of our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ, Luke chapter 2 is where the resolve is coming from. Luke chapter 2, verses 36 to 38, the Bible says, Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple but served God with the fastings and the prayers night and day. That is, that should be your resolve as mothers. Be like Anna of old. She was a widow. From the time she got married to the time the husband died, it was only seven years. But she remained in the house of God. By the time Jesus Christ was taken there for dedication, she was 84 years old. Never departing from the house of God, fasting there and praying night and day. May you remain in the house of God, wherever you worship, night and day, until the Lord comes. Children, May the following be your resolve. As you travel through life awaiting for the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6, the Bible says, Wisdom and the knowledge shall be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. In the language where you come from, it says, To know God will be your treasure. Your, your dad never despised God. Never despised God. He's the giver of life. He's the giver of everything that we have. The grandchildren may say the following. Let this also be your soul through life, awaiting for the soon return of our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. First part of the verse says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. A good man leaves an inheritance to his grandchildren. And the Proverbs chapter 17, verse 6. He says also, part one, grandchildren are the crowns of old men. Therefore, remain to be crowns of your grandpa who has slept. In other words, your behaviors, your walk in life, whatever you do, remain a crown to the grandmom who are there and to the grandpa who has gone to sleep. And now, the entire family. May the following be your resolve as you travel through life, awaiting for the soon return of our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 45 and the verses 24. It is a statement that was spoken by Joseph. Now, because of time, we can't go to that long story, but 
because you read and you understand, Joseph had been sold by his brothers to the land of Egypt, and he remained there. They knew he's dead. But many years later, later there was famine in the land, in the land of Canaan, where they were. And then they heard there is food in the land of Egypt. So Jacob sent them to go and get food from Egypt. When they reached there, they were directed to the one who was in charge of the stores of Chakula in Egypt, and this was Joseph. And they went there and stood before him. They did not know him because they sold him when he was a very young boy. He had now grown. He had grown beards. He was a big man. He was big. He was married. They didn't know him. But later he identified himself to his brothers and said, you know, I'm Joseph. But then to cut the long story short, as he was telling them to go home, this is what he told them. Genesis chapter 45, verse 24. So Joseph sent his brothers away, and as they departed, he said to them, do not quarrel on the way. Children of Mze Simeon, do not quarrel on the way. As you are traveling through life, don't quarrel. Charles, allow me to say this and the entire family. In the language through which I can translate, let the community, the nation, and the universe come one day and they begin calling each other. And this is the language they will be using. Dero in Chumuchikor Rabuna Mwanya Chaego Karangana. Are you getting that? Kukangana. Dero in Chutuchikor Rabuna Mwanya Chaego Karangana. Don't quarrel on the way. Sasa, who is seated naked here going to fight that I have no clothes on? Who is hungry here? The way you are healthy. The way you look big and strong and stout, who is going to quarrel that you don't have food to eat? Who? Joseph told his brothers, as you go home to dad, please don't quarrel on the way. Because he knew they could begin saying, Simeon, you know you are the one who was the ringleader in selling Joseph. You are the one. He knew that could come up, and he said, don't quarrel on the way. It's our prayer for you as a family from the word of God. In Psalms chapter 133, the Bible says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This was a statement that was made by, by David. David was a fugitive for a long time. King Saul wanted to eliminate him. So he was running from one place to another, escaping, you know, from Saul. So one time, in a place that was known as Adullam, there were so many caves there. So as David and his team reached that place, they rested, and David went into the cave to rest. Following all the time he was being chased by King Saul, the family members were following from behind. So they came to Adullam, and then they said, we are David's family, and they still told David, your family members are here. When he came out of the cave, and they found his family members, dad, mom, sisters, brothers, the entire family, he cried, he burst out and said, if we had not unity in our family, you could not come looking for me. Behold, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Dwell together in unity. Soon and very soon, Jesus is coming to forever save us from sin and death and all kinds of suffering. The signs that were foretold by, by Jesus Christ that will take place in order to usher in his second coming are first fulfilling. On which side of the great controversy will you be found? On the side of Christ or on the side of the great dragon that is Satan? Who will be destroyed together with his angels, his agents, never more seen 
to be experienced again throughout the eternal ages. And as we come to a close, may the following words remain in our hearts and all of us. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city in the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and they will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and the God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, there shall be no more sorrow, there shall be no more crying, there will be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. May these words ring in our hearts. There is a new heaven and a new earth coming. In the new heaven, in the new earth, there will be no more sanitizing because we will be there already sanitized. There will be no more social distancing because we will be there already cleansed, a people holy before God. There will be no password because Christ has already become our password from this world. May none of us miss there because that is the ultimate. Out of this world, we are moving. Into the new world, we are going. May the grace of God abide in the hearts of you as a family and of each one of us as we anticipate to meet our beloved dad in the resurrection morning a wonderful reunion, never to part forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, as we come to this point, I request the pastors who are within the congregation to come up stage. Uh, we are going to offer a prayer for the family, and we will request them for those who are able to stand while I'm going to Kusimama. You stand where you are um, as we pray. Wachungaji ambao wako katika congregation kindly come on stage and we do our response, our work. Um, while the family members and uh, the pastors who have come to the stage before we do a prayer because as a church we are going to conclude our exercise and then leave this responsibility to the family and uh, the MC here to do the final Touches from the church on behalf of the pastorate of this church and on, on behalf of the elders and the entire church membership of this church from the bottom of our hearts the senior government leaders and uh, all of you we sincerely want to thank you right from the beginning we said we want this meeting to be a blessing to all of us and really both the participants and the listeners you have made this meeting a blessing we want to thank you we have really seen the hand of the lord has been with you and you listened to this kind of a voice and you have given God all the respect due him. And we want to say that as we go back and wherever you will be, any meeting that you will be having, make sure that any contribution you make, you make it for the glory and the honor of God, 
who is your creator, your creator and your redeemer. We want to thank you greatly and we want to pray that God blesses all of you, all of you. We want to thank you. The family members, thank you for recognizing God as the only person who can give you the true comfort and uh, courage that you need at this time. I now want to call upon two pastors to pray. Uh, Pastor Mangi is here from South Kenya Conference. Pastor Yakov, please, the two of you, come to the stage, uh, move to the front. Pastor Yako is part of the family. Uh, the lady is his uncle. And uh, Pastor Mangi is our pastor from South Kenya Conference. He has traveled all along to come this way, even Pastor Yako, to be with us. We want them to place Pastor Yako, pray for yourself. Pastor Mangi, pray for these people. When I say pray for yourself, because your blood is with these people, pray for yourself. And Pastor Mangi also will pray for the entire family and the rest of the congregation. And uh, we begin with Pastor Yako. Let us believe and pray. Almighty Father God in heaven, we come before thy presence this afternoon as we gather here to mourn the passing away of our uncle Simon, we want to thank you for being with us throughout the service until now. We want to thank you for the years that uh, you gave him to us and all that he did to each and every one of us that is here today, and particularly the family, and more so the family that is standing before the congregation, that we have come here to mourn together and to console with one another. And in a special way, we call upon the presence to touch each and every member and to walk with each and every member to bless us and to members in thy kingdom. Many things have been said for our Patrick and our hero and how we touched the lives of the people and we know it's you was touching their lives through him because you, give, you gave him the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge and all the power that was able to live the life that is lived. He has left behind a legacy that will be there in the minds of the people and will touch many after he is gone. We want so to pray knowing that death is not the end of everything because your promise is beyond death and the grave there's life for those who believe. We also know that it was a man who feared you was a man who depend on you day and night and therefore we strongly believe that soon and very soon when you come with the kingdom we shall meet and be together forever as we continue to mourn as we continue to be together as we continue with the its last journey we want to invite that presence that everything may move on smoothly to their glory and honor Bless my mothers who are here. Bless my brothers who are here. Bless our children and even our grandchildren and the rest of the family members in order for us all to be consoled, be comforted, and to be with you forevermore. We thank you, Father God, for everything. Together with the prayers that my colleagues shall be praying, we pray that may you hear and answer us, and above all, may glory and honor be unto thee, for this is our prayer. It's in them we pray. Amen.
the Lord. Together with what my brother said, why are these people gathered here? Why is this family standing up? Isn't it because they are aching, their hearts are pained, and the rest of us have come to be with them so that by our presence, they may know they have people who are standing with them to pray with them. In a moment as this, we have taken consolation in your word, ably brought to us by Pastor Nathan. Help this family to focus on you, Jesus Christ, the source of unity, the source of comfort, courage, and solace. As they move on, let their singleness of attitude remain that soon we are crossing over to the new land where death will never reign, where we'll be free to walk before you. There are so many things that they need in their hearts. The vacuum that has been left by the late patriarch, it's only you, Jesus, who will fill it. As we continue through this till Monday, we are praying that your presence that has been prevailing go through and surround all of us. May you bless each one of us who came to this meeting, that your word may be increasing in our hearts richly. It is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now, because of the COVID-19, we will not reach you and shake hands. I can request the pastorate just to wave to the family. The family do the same. All of you, can you wish them well? May God bless you and keep you. Um, Jeff? to thank you very reverently for being patient and thank you very much Pastor Irere for a wonderful sermon that has been delivered and as we now get to the tail end of the program I'm going to call upon uh, Charles Nchai and uh, Senator Ongeri to give the vote of thanks and thereafter, we shall say the grace. And please will request that you'll be ushered out by the ushers and the deacons. I did see Jerry Siage yeah, and uh, the team of Nyaboki Omambia. Please uh, be on standby and faith on the team. So you shall be ushered out. And... There's also a request from the chairman of the funeral committee. Uh, CS Fred Matiangi has requested the funeral committee members, please leave, uh, stay behind. Let's meet on my left-hand side with Waziri for only five minutes. I know sugar levels are down, but just we seek for indulgence for five minutes with him there and we shall then let you go. So, uh, Justice Charles Nchai, please come, and then followed by, uh, or both of you can come together, Senator, so that you can give the vote of thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. 
Ah, viongozi wale wako hapa mawaziri ah, governors ah, a member of parliament the honorable uh, tongi marafiki wote wa mzee baba yetu ambaye ametuaga na marafiki wa familia yetu and everybody who has come to mourn with us to celebrate dad's life with us let me say a very good afternoon to you all like the apostle paul in his second letter to timothy i think we can fairly say that dad has fought the good fight he has finished the race and he has kept the faith everybody in this room probably of the majority of people were touched in one way or another by dad throughout his life. Some have had the opportunity to speak, others may have the opportunity to uh, speak when we go home uh, at the weekend. Some of you may not have the opportunity to speak at all, but in your hearts you know how you may have interrupted with him either directly or even from his uh, public life and how he may have impacted on your life. I don't want to take too much time, but I seek your indulgence so that I just mention for me personally the things that, in very briefly, what I think I have or can pick from dad's life even as I may aspire to achieve some of the things that I am about to mention and I will not go into any great details but the first thing that I want to mention that I picked from dad throughout his life is the need to treat everybody all human beings with dignity and respect whoever they are whether they were his subordinates people who worked for him or people that he encountered or his colleagues i always picked the desire in him to treat everybody with dignity and respect the second thing that I want to mention, and other people may have mentioned it in their different ways, is, and I think every member of our family will uh, agree with me, is dad's work ethic. I mean, I think it was always drilled in us that you're not going to get anywhere in this life unless you work hard unless you focus on what you're doing and unless you are consistent in aspiring to do that it was mentioned here i think it was in the in the eulogy but i want to take a second to uh, 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 mention it more graphically uh my sorry, my my siblings who are you know the older ones the, the ones just older than me or just slightly uh, uh, behind me will recall uh, in the late 1960s when uh, we had moved our grandmother had moved uh, to the settlement scheme and so we used to spend our holidays there and during the season I remember dad was PC in Nakuru. He would work in his office until five o'clock. He would then get into his car, 
drive from Nakuru to uh, near Sotik where uh, our home is and he would exchange roles. We, he had employed one tractor driver and this tractor driver would do the plowing during the day. Dad would come, they exchange, yeah, na toangu zake zakazi. He gets on the tractor and he plows using uh, headlights for several hours. And Maliza and Aoga get back into his car and he will be at his office at seven in the morning, at his office as a provincial commissioner in, uh, in Nakuru. I think for us, we learned a lot from that in terms of what, putting in practice what he taught us about the importance of hard work. The third, and for now the final one that I am going to mention, that dad always taught us to strive to achieve, is that in everything you do, big or small, do the right thing. However small it may appear, do the right thing and maintain your integrity. On this last one, I'm going to give you a very brief sto story and it will not take two minutes. In 1979, Dad came for my graduation at the University of Stirling in Scotland. The plan was we finished the graduation then we fly back with him to London. So we finished the graduation. We got into a, a taxi. A taxi took us from uh, Stirling to Glasgow, which was the nearest airport. As we were getting out of the taxi, the taxi driver told him how much he needed to pay. So he gave him the money. Now, by some confusion, the, 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 sometimes the colors of uh, the, the British uh, currency notes can be a little confusing. So, he took his change and we are walking into, into the, the uh, airport building and the driver, the taxi driver, is standing around now to uh, drive off. Those of us in our family and anybody else who knew that closely knew that any time you give him change, and I, you know, he checks it very carefully before putting it back in his pocket. Now, as he did this, lo and behold, he realized because of the confusion, the taxi driver had actually given him more money than he had given him. In other words, the taxi driver made a mistake because of the mix-up with, the, with the, the, the color of the note. Now, here I make a confession, uh, Mark. <laughs> Me, I'm standing there thinking to myself, wow, we are lucky today. We <laughs> to this year. But I want to tell you, the speed at which Dad bolted out of that building, that time Glasgow Airport was small, and he ran to the gate and just caught the taxi driver on time so that he could give him back his money, which he had given <laughs> too much. As a young man, I'm thinking to myself, and of course as a student, I'm thinking to myself, Apa mungu alikuwa ametu... Ametu bless. But I learned, I learned a lesson. The speed at which that Muse ran, even uh, Hussein Bolt would have been proud of him. So that he could make sure he did the right thing and give that taxi driver back his money. It's a lesson that up to today, over 40 years later, uh, when I think about it, it always reminds me of uh, the in how living a life of integrity was important 
to my dad. Now let me do what I was asked to do, which is the vote of thanks. Let me uh, begin by thanking in a very special way the uh, medical personnel both here in Kenya and in the UK who over the years and especially the last three years when dad has been very unwell have looked after him. And I, there are many of them, but I specifically want to mention in the UK, we want to mention uh, the lead doctor, uh, Stephen Manga, and uh, the other doctors uh, who looked after dad. In Nairobi, we want to uh, uh, mention uh, his doctor, Dr. Robert Mandenge, and the other doctors at the Nairobi Hospital. We want to acknowledge all the nurses and caregivers both in the hospitals and uh, in the company called Pinaco, which were providing uh, 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 caregivers for dad in, in, in this uh, last, last uh, uh, couple of years. We want to thank and acknowledge all the men and women of God from different churches uh, who uh, supported us as a family in prayers and messages of encouragement throughout the journey when dad was unwell. We specifically uh, acknowledge the uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church uh, leadership. We acknowledge uh, His Grace, uh, the Bishop of Kisi. We acknowledge uh, uh, Bishop Oscar and uh, the Reverend uh, Beatrice Muriu. We acknowledge Pastor Luke Jaoko and the Nairobi Chapel leadership. We also acknowledge many of Muse's friends who visited him in hospitals, both in the UK and in Kenya. So the medical personnel, even if we haven't mentioned their names individually, please, as a family, we will not forget what they did and we acknowledge them. We want to say a very big thank you. Now coming to the time that uh, dad has uh, uh, passed on. I want to begin by saying a very big thank you on behalf of the family to His Excellency uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, who is not just our president, but is a long time close family friend and we want to thank him and acknowledge for all the support that we have received from him personally and from the government of Kenya and in that respect uh, uh, Waziri uh, you are the person who has uh, been taking the president's instructions and uh, uh, assisting us in this in these matters and I had the opportunity yesterday when the President visited us at home to uh, thank him, but we shall continue again to thank him. I thank you. I thank your team, some of whom are here, uh, for helping us to uh, walk through and wade through what is not really uh, very easy at all. And I know you are continuing to do it. I know you are going to continue to do it as as we go to uh, Kisi, and I want to say uh, thank you very much. I want to thank on behalf of the family every single person, and there are hundreds of them. I can't name all of them. People who have come physically, uh, have come to Loresho to see uh, 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 Mama Pauline and, and the rest of us who, when we have been there. There are many others uh, who have come uh, to my house in uh, Red Hill Road, uh, where my mother has been most of the time, come and uh, condole with us. There are many who have sent messages. There are many who have called us. There are many who have given much practical support. I want to acknowledge all of them. Some of you are here. Uh, falling under the category of leadership, my member of parliament, uh, 
uh, Richard Tongi uh, is there, and uh, uh, my friend, the Deputy Governor of Kisi uh, County, who has been at my house literally every day, and of course, in that process, he represents uh, uh, my governor, who was one of the first people to call me when this happened, and all of you. Please don't imagine that because we have not mentioned your name specifically, that we have not appreciated you. We have truly, truly valued uh, the support that you have given us. We want to appreciate uh, the Nairobi Central SDA Church. Thank you for uh, making this arrangement. Uh, what uh, you have been able uh, to do for us today, the program that uh, you have been able uh, to run. And of course, the fact that you have uh, presented us as uh, uh, people of God, you have presented us and interceded for us in prayers. We want to thank you very much. Minto mwanyake tinge umogusi. Aki tika ante venga mbuya mono na ande mbuya mone kera ye. Ande kera ngo bata vim mbuya mono bono ye ngo kwa na. Aseri baka yo mwaka katata. Awana wa minto mba manye to mwaka katata ya aga tebire. Nga inche. Ni manye taba antwa minto mba nye anche te. Ne nga kiri tu kori anelira ike. Ni manye taba antwa minto na upara ache kwa ntinde ka. Naga tebire bo. Bo no. Itu kodi ayeri aiki. Entah betul entah kita kau bawa kerangam biar mono. Biar mono abang tu bawa minto umur usi buen si sewaya kuah beta. Biar mono aso buan cadi nama skani muah itu muah kata ata amatu konsi. Nande nimbu atau kuege na. Muno mano minto muaziri aku ananga. Kogenderaiga kuruwa no paka kila tuwe cha ukoro moja kabu moja aka inu una bantu wa minto imoe ndere kama wa maskani ayo aketa hika yao moja yao lakini asari yonse moja mokola rete ili arengo burai abantu wa njiri wa richeache njiri wa rikuwa jumla na gusi yonse asa maskani ayo no buanchani yangu akenga mbia mono. Niki Malaysia, nani na Malaysia apo? Because it is the most important thanks that we want to give. But before the most important, let me give the most second most important thanks. And the second most important thanks is now internal. And here I am speaking on behalf of Dad's children. And I am talking to our mothers. And I want to appreciate them. I want to say thank you very much. Kwa vile umechunga mze miaka yote, before uh, we were born, after we have been born, throughout all these years, ili ikamwezesha that he was able to bring us up together with yourselves in the manner that he has done so. For sure, he would not have done it if he did not have your support. Mama, biyamono aena wangu na bande no nyemba diba tunyolele asenjera mu arendo muaka miake yonsi kiara tare ocha konyara go to kolera una bantu ba ye una to kolere onye mumole ndebi umong na mama Pauline. Tigante ba iga se abantu bonsi bara ba minto ni nsingi ma. Ngwa kere ngambia mono, ande mbia mono, enchi rakuwa rendo mwaka, anene, ama tukaya, ekera arwa. Ntoro uche muna abana bao, na ande to waka ngambia mono, nesaa go seseni. The last thanks, the most important. We want to give thanks to the almighty God. You know, 
It is a fact. It is a fact that dad was not a regular church goer. And by the way, neither am I, but that is just coincidental. But, truly speaking, if there was a man after God's own heart, it was my dad. Because he acknowledged God and he acknowledged that everything came from God. You know, dad, wale wanajua marafiki zake, kina mzee Madenge, mzee Senator. You know, sometimes there are, in public life, there were some rough periods for dad, as indeed for all of you. But one consistent thing, one consistent thing, dad would always say, everything is in God's hands. Everything is in God's hands. And he would never forget to thank God. And so, now that our dad has passed away, we want to acknowledge as a family, we want to acknowledge God for the life that he has given dad, for everything that dad has been able to achieve, and indeed, even for enabling dad, he's been through a huge struggle um, medically over the last few years. But because God is faithful, he kept him and enabled him to continue to do what he was able to do up to the last minute. We want to thank God. We have accepted Mpango ya Mungu that was the time that God ordained for dad to rest. As I go to take my seat, I have one request for all of you. All of you who are here as family, all of you who are here as friends, even as I thank all of you for having interacted with dad and touched his life and our lives as his family in one way or another. I have one request of you that you continue to uphold us in prayer. If you do that, and I know you will do that, we will do our part to continue as a family in the manner that dad would have wanted us to stay together as a family, to do the things that he taught us were the right things to do. But your prayer, your prayers are very, very important to us. I thank you very much. Thank you for even coming to this service today. Thank you for your patience. And even as I ask you to pray for us, we too shall pray for all of you that God may continue to bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On. Thank you very much. I know you are tired and I intend to be extremely brief. First and foremost, Mama Grace, Mongina Marita, Biamono, Asogo to Rendom Ako Yoga, to Abena Lemiake. I'm just thank telling the mothers, thank you for keeping this mze for us to enjoy his 
benevolence and everything he did for the community. Two, there's something that Mzee did and I looked at the eulogy. It was not mentioned and I want to put it on record. Unknown to many, he's one of those who donated some sets of library to Adventist University of Africa, Aua, in uh, Ngaterungai. And I remember I attended that function, and I think it's something that put him close to the church. And I think, Grace, you know this. Three, the political leadership. Mwishmi Watongi, you inherited a very large shoes but I, I can see you are behaving. You are behaving well, and, and I think the part one of what you have seen here today, part two at home, will not depart from what you have seen here today. The message simply saying, we as a political class, we have decided, consciously decided, that the function of Mze Nyachai shall be a very smooth function. There will be no side shows. <laughs> Absolutely no side shows. And for the very many close friends that I've seen here, James Mathenge, Mudoniwa, Musila, and many others who have come here. That relationship with our community has brought Kenya much together, more closer to each other. We no longer see each other as tribes. We see each other as the people belonging to the nation of Kenya. So I thank you for that role you have played. C.S. Matangi, and through the president, and uh, C.S. Matai, Matai, thank you for the messages that you've been bringing. In fact, those of us, Charles, you now know, and you heard yesterday from the president himself, that you have now inherited a mantle, and the shoe is quite heavy, but with God's prayer, that shoe is going to be lighter. And I like the concluding remarks of our pastor, the presiding pastor today, Pastor Irere. You put it so well, so nice, so calm. I shall not say any more. I'll have an opportunity to talk or at home on the long relationship I've had with Mzee Nyachai. I will not say it now here, but I will say it to the audience at home. But one thing I can tell you, he was our alcoholic, a man who stood for his, with his word. One time we made a decision what we should do in Nyaribari politics, and we went to Nyeri, and I remember it was him, he was the PC in Nyeri, Late Andrew Manga, late Sam Ogembo. The rest is history. But that was firm, and I know from that level, he was a man of his own word. And I want to thank him that he put us together, and we remain together as a family and as a unit of the nation of Gusi, joining the rest of Kenya nation to build this nation together. And since he tried that thing one time or the other, I know God will give us an opportunity in the future. God bless you. To all the speakers who have spoken here, to all of you who have prayed with the family, to those of you who are watching us online, 
and on TV. We want to take this opportunity to sincerely thank you. We are grateful that we have now come to the end of this function. And without much ado, I'm going to request that we all stand up and say the grace. And subsequently, the choristers, please, James and uh, Hezron and Biko, please come and you will lead us into a song. And please remember, after saying the grace, we request that you sit down for very few minutes, hardly three, for you to get the order of leaving. And remember, uh, the committee, funeral committee members, meet the CS over there. So may we say the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. May we be seated, please. Valentine is coming. Auntie, where's your boyfriend? I am sitting at home. Ukiwekelea beat pale nyumbani. <laughs> eh, ni raisi zaidi. Leo tunapea na nini? Tunapea na four bana kuka ya von. Unapika na unabek. Mara moja ni ya gas kuka. Wekelea sasa. Nenda kwenye quickbid.co.ke. Kila wakati ni bidha bora. Kwenye bei ya nini? Chini kwa chini. Jiunga na quickbid ni raisi. Enda kwenye mpesa. Bunyeza paybill. Kisha weka business number 4032353. Kwenye account. Weka kodi bidha unayotaka. Na bidi yako ya chini zaidi. Kwa mfano TV16. Kisha weka shilingi 22 kama iradi yako. Weka bidi yako pia kwenye www.quickbid.co.ke. Kumbuka. Bidi ya chini zaidi ya kipeke. Ndiyo ununua. Quick bid with our Bora Kwabeya Chini. Tonight on KBC Channel One. You are like my shadow, Osho. Can I ever try to get rid of you? I was right here. Thank you so much for saving me. If you wanted, you could have told Kichak the truth. Actually, the thing is, I saved my life and not really yours, Ashok. Had I told Lord Kichak the truth, then he would have killed you as well as me. Hey! You stopped me. Tell me why. What's the reason? If we kill him, he will become great in the eyes of people. 
He is about to die eventually. We just need to make sure he is breathing till sunset, so that the entire world can witness his defeat. And he can also see the trust of all those people getting shattered, who thought he is going to give them their freedom. Valentine is coming. Auntie. Where is your boyfriend? I am sitting at home. Ukiwekelea beat pale nyumbani. Eh, ni raisi zaidi. Leo tunapeana nini? Tunapeana four bana kuka ya von. Unapika na unabake. Mara moja ni ya gas kuka. Wekelea sasa. Nenda kwenye quickbid.co.ke. Kila wakati ni bidha bora. Kwenye bei ya nini? Chini kwa chini. Jiunga na quickbid ni raisi. Enda kwenye mpesa. Bunyeza paybill. Kisha weka business number 4032353. Kwenye account. Weka kodi bidha unayotaka na bidi yako ya chini zaidi kwa mfano TV16 kisha weka shilingi 20 tu kama idadi yako weka bidi yako pia kwenye www.quickbid.co.ke kumbuka bidi ya chini zaidi ya kipekee ndio ununua quickbid bidha bora kwa bei ya chini Shoro FM inakuletea Valentine's Family Day Out tarehe 14 mwezi huu. Jiunge na watangazaji wetu wapendao kusherekea siku ya upendo nao katika 022 Gardens eneo la Kamiti Kona Junction. Andamana na familia katika bustani ya 022 kwa raha ya aina yake ikiwemo michezo ya bouncing castles kwa watoto. Tapo line boat ride na uje na ndoana au utumie yetu kuvua samaki waimbaji tajika wa injili watakutumbuiza kuanzia saa tano mchana na wale wa country music na mugidhi wa kumalize hadi mida ya kafiu jabu ni kuwa kiingilio ni bure karibu tusherekee upendo Valentine is coming. Auntie, where is your boyfriend? I am sitting at home. Ukiwekelea beat pale nyumbani. Eh, <laughs> ni raisi zaidi. Leo tunapeana nini? Tunapeana four bana kuka ya von. Unapika na unabake. Mara moja ni ya gas kuka. Wekelea sasa.